John's played his guitar. John is bored. What happened? Sherry, here? let's get a move on. Know. Hello, people. Welcome to today's video. We are sleuthing it with Sherlock Holmes, Chapter One. It's an action adventure mystery video game that's been developed by Frogwares, who I'd like to thank very much for the key. We follow a young Sherlock Holmes as he investigates a mystery in his family's home on the Mediterranean island of Cordona after his mother's death. Let's jump in and have some fun with the super sleuth himself. I presume Ginger, this is Holmes on the bed. Need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. He sounds like Sherlock, don't doesn't he? you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. I don't get seasick. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost Sherry? Ah. I can see land through oh, the Oh, it's a term of endearment so for, for Sherlock. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, is Sherlock grumpy? Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. Is this his brother, then? What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the week's long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Oh, the indignity of throwing up oh, one's guts. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ooh, are we going to grasp oh, the captain up? I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Let's do it together, Sherry. Ooh, pretty island. Welcome to the game. Use the L stick to move around and press X to interact with objects. All right, jump. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Well, I'm right next to you, buddy. Where are we going then? What's with the sleeve, Sherlock? Why do we have one sleeve up and one sleeve down? It's quite an interesting look you're rocking there, young Sherry. Let's go in here. Thank you. Let's go in. Oh, we can. Thank you. All right. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. Two, two, one. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Let's go have a look at our room, John. I don't know where it is, but upstairs, obviously. Two, two, one. Two, two, six. Two to seven. I'm going the wrong way then. Oh wait. That's two to six. Maybe the other one was two to eight then. I was not paying that close attention, which is not good, Marp, when you are playing a detective game. I'm guessing we have to go down and up the other side. Pardon me, excuse me, coming through. Two to three. Ah, oh, here he is. These must be our bags. Good show there, fellow. I apologise, sir, oh. but your room is not yet ready. Well, this is not Perhaps good standards. in the meantime, you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Oh, how fabulous. Let's check what they have on offer. Oh, are you here, John? Oh, you are. Oh, hello. We're going down to the foyer then, John. Let's check what they have on offer. Or oh, I am. Let's go check what they've got on offer. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. All right, then. Oh. Hello. Who is this man with the swagger? 
Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own. It doesn't need a why. It's its own Things justification. Justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. You tell him, Sherlock. Art is the lens through which we see the truth of the world. That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it. Just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth. Like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Rude. I know, right, John? Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm this is what this stuff is. I was trying to do that okay, before you called me over. Check if John found us a nice table for the evening. There he is. This is where Shall we're having we our dinner. Here with my new Ursine companion. I see it. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? Oh, have we got cards? What do you have in mind? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, uh, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Why should I return it? Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something ah, to ah, do I that love doesn't it. make it worthwhile. Slap yourself in Do the right. face. No, don't do that, people. It's not advisable. Let's have a look at this cane. So it's gone yellow, so I guess that's where we inspect it. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. It's a bludgeon, eh? My gosh. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. Sherlock can ask bystanders about a piece of evidence. Press the options to open the case book, pin the evidence with a square, and then speak to someone. Well, let's go ask this chap who's closest. Excuse me, sir. Pardon, monsieur. But I am not in the mood to talk. Excuse me, madam. May I ask you something? You are fortunate to ask me. Oh. Because I know that. Good. There were three people at the table, a couple, and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to find him. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how Ooh, good we can you have really a bet. are. Press R1 to concentrate and review details to identify your target. Don't forget to pin the relevant evidence. Some clues won't be visible without it. Try to find the Navy officer. Right, so we're going to put pin John's bet. As a pug, affable. Breeds birds, friendly. Do you know anything about this? Do you know anything about this, Navy you officer? An for everything, but not oh. This. Right. What about you? Do you know anything about this? I can't help you, friend. Oh, I am bored. Don't I rush me. Find the answer. Don't rush me, John. Uh, don't take it personally, sir. Uh, but I know nothing about this. Should we go out into the garden then? Teacher. Someone else who has a pug. Scottish actor. English actor. 
and unknown. Not that one, huh? You lost the bet. I wasn't picking him. What? Navy officer. Oh no! I was not picking him. I was going to ask him a question. Hang on, John. That's not fair. Fix. Do you know anything about this? I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. What about you? Did you see anything? Someone left their cane at my table. I suspect you will want it back. My apologies, sir, but I wouldn't know how to identify its owner. Hmm. So the simplest option ended in failure. That's irritating. No. Irritating. Yes, irritating is you trying to break the rules of my game, Sherry. Don't be so lazy. Got a trophy for it, though. If I pin the lost cane, maybe I've got the wrong thing pinned. Let's try again. May I ask for your assistance? My dear fellow, oh. you're talking to the right man. Well, how wonderful. The Navy officer, Mr. Rose, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The men talked about yachting, and the lady was fidgeting with her cane. Perhaps she put it aside, and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I think we I'm have. I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. Hmm. Oh, take that, you ragamuffin. First my cane, now the diamond. Oh, dear, it's Take just too much. Me. It's just too much for me. Do you even know who I am? Hey, boy, that's my cane. I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made. A joke. A joke. Oh, little Sherry I made a joke. In the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be. <sighs> It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. A straight-fingered true ask, penny. How did you know I was the rightful owner? I'm Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Swollen reddish skin. Rich and fashionable. Doesn't wear a wedding ring. Recently hit someone with force. Well, we just saw him do that, Sherlock. So, a head of garlic, red face, expensive in new clothes, slight red knuckles. Judging by the heraldic emblem on his signet ring and cane, I could be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a noble Englishman in the habit of visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver malady. His florid face suggests that he has succumbed to the temptation to drink a few shots of alcohol. Perhaps he was unsettled by the seance. By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical condition. Already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond, unsurprisingly. So is he an ill Englishman on resort? Or a bored British nobleman. Bored British nobleman. He just drinks too much. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvellous. Marvellous. Simply marvellous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play Oh, we're going to find a diamond you, now. Oh, exciting. Don't. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. 
What happened at the seance? Tell me about the diamond. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. And what happened at the seance? You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, oh, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed Ooh, Emma. in horror. Emma! Oh, it's I just to too much for Emma! Attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Da, da, da. Let's have a look around Stay then. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Press L1 to highlight interactive areas in the environment around you. This ability must recharge before it can be used again. So here is the seance table. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details about the world around you. When you see a scribbled white circle, press R1 to observe the object more closely. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. Okay, so we've got five clues to find here. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a Paul Aranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. You've brought your chemistry lab with you, have you? Something here. What's best to do with this? This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. You're rude, Sherlock. Got a, a mind palace clue. What is that? There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. Oh! Mind Palace. We've got the moth pin. Lady Craven faced the window. During the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was an opposite a window to the courtyard. And Luca owns the pin in the shape of a moth. Don't really tell me much. Let's have a look around for more. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Oh, well done you, old Lord Craven. Let's talk to the medium. John's playing his guitar. John is bored. What happened Sherry, then? let's get a move on. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. Let's find out who did it, Sherlock. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him. I don't know you from Please. Adam. I can't vouch for you. Like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Sherry. I'm I've sure already been in the there. Sorry. You found enough clues to make a deduction. Well, I've already been into my mind palace. Open the case book, then navigate to the mind palace. Inside, pair the clues you've gathered to make deductions. So we've got the pin. Lady Craven faced the window. She pointed across the table. 
and then he punched the medium. So I'm going to, I don't know what relevance the pin is. So I guess we're going to say that she, Lady Craven faced the window and then she saw something at the window and screamed. What does that mean? Lady Craven was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. So does that mean we have to go outside? An unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Really? Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. More likely. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? It adds so much atmosphere to the room. We talked to Emma. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. <laughs> really? A feebleness <gasps> of women. Sherlock, really you can't say that. Thing. All evidence collected. All right, let's go outside then and have a look. Oh, very fancy. We have an indoor pool. It's very grand, isn't it? Oh, something down here. Now, what did it say I have to do? I had to do that or something, didn't I? Recently scratched, something stuck. It's like the heel of a shoe or something. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. And somebody walking right, with John. a limp. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen <laughs> eye to follow the trail. To track someone's movements, first pin the relevant evidence to the screen, then enter concentration mode to reveal the trail. Sherlock will intuit the appropriate path to stay within the search area. John's taken a little break and he's uh, getting his feet wet. Let's follow these footsteps. Change the shoe. That looks like a lady's shoe. And the heel is missing. Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... No. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hey. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Is this familiar to you? Oh, yes. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Oh, hello, you've just appeared. You weren't here before. This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. Sherlock, you're so rude. Finally, there you are. How do you One know that's her? maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towel? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm solving a crime. A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss? Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I. Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't. But only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. What did you see in the room? Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant. 
and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a, a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. Did you see and anything else? All you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? Mm -hmm. the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. <laughs> and thank yeah, you. Poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. They're as rude as each other. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past. Interact with the nodes to begin and recreate an accurate version of events. Here, try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. Oh! I think, right, where's the window? The window is there, so I think he was here. Yes, he threw the chair at him. And Emma was here. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. Grabbed his chair. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least <gasps> until she fainted. Emma's got the diamond. Amazing. It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? A pin in the evidence is, is quite crucial to this game. So that you get the right evidence pinned, so you talk to the right person. What are you two listening to Lady outside Queen the door? Is not who she seems. Remember her behaviour in the hall? Gossip can help you investigate a case, or even discover a new one. So don't hesitate to eavesdrop on people. Lady when you Queen see an ear icon, hold X seen. to try and filter Remember out important words for you from useless chatter. What actions by Lady Craven arouse suspicion in the maids? Oh, we can keep that. Can't use a fish knife. <gasps> Maybe she's not really. Maybe. Maybe she's not really <gasps> Lady Craven. They gossiped, ooh, walls have ears. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observations, she was on the lookout during the evening while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. So let's walk in then and have a chat with the Cravens. Oh no, what has occurred here? Lord Craven has killed his wife! You're here, at last. I didn't do that, I swear. I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look. 
After you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. Was Emma with you? And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go next? Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Well, we know where the medium is, don't we? Was he not locked in a room? Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Pigeon-livered, oh, I, I know what that means. That means myself. coward. Perhaps he I, I came across that the other day. Now we arrive at the tragedy of Pigeon-livered. Coward. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. <laughs> splendid, splendid news. The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Barely an hour has passed and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? Because we're awesome. So, let's have a look at the body. This must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. Maybe they were looking for the... Well, they wouldn't have been looking for the diamond bec oh, because um, they've left it on the bed. What were they looking Strangled for? Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. What's going on here? We've got a thingy. Ordinary cheap brass. Weak Remarkably lock. Remarkably simple lock. Can we break it? Why is it telling me about this door? Ooh, too shallow. False uh -huh. bottom. A neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of this? Virtus or Dactus Sapit, courage tastes bold. A unique family motto. Hmm, this ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is, is familiar. That, uh, from the seance room, the butterfly moth thingy. Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past and poor taste. Oh, we saw some papers on a desk in here. With some food. Can we have a nibble? Oh, no. Letter regarding compensation. Lord Craven, you promised me compensation for your gross misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal. Yet I have not received a penny. You know that I lost my job after your false accusations. Now, even after my innocence has been proven, I cannot return to work because of my hand injury. If you continue to ignore me, I shall be forced to appeal to the court. Letter regarding the stolen ring. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the theft investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. We had to free L.O. Dupont, the servant, as we were unable to find any evidence of his participation in the crime. We will inform you of any progress in this case. I can't find anything else in this room. Provide evidence. <gasps> what evidence, though? Let's just talk to him. Right. Provide evidence. Oh, what are we going to pin? Stolen ring? I doubt I can help with this. Oh, what about this one? I doubt one? I can help with this. 
This one? I found these jewels secreted away. There we go. Familiar with Ah it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. Trollop. I'd kill her myself, was she not dead already? Does he allegedly not know anything? Do you recognize this ring? Should I? It's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. Let's go and get the key from the reception. I'm sure they'll be so obliging. Give the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Oh, they don't know about hush. the body yet. No need to cause another ruckus. Yes, hush, the John. Last thing hush. We want is the police to come meddling. Right, let's go into 225. Here he is. John's already in here. How did you do that? I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure the spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. Used a lot of makeup. Took a heavy blow. Trained in sleight of hand. Skinny, seems malnourished. Fresh scrapes, slightly bleeding. Luca Galacci is lean and appears malnourished. His nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. He uses makeup to hide the traces of his illness from malnourishment. His hands and thin fingers indicate that he is skilled at conjuring tricks used to manipulate concealed items. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrists from a recent short fight. I think he tries his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well. And he sometimes has to go without food. I would suggest he's a former thief that became a medium. And those fresh scrapes, could they be from Emma? I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told oh, you this Sherlock, already. Oh, Sherlock, a little bit of sarcasm there. Necessary state for summoning. The spirits preferred clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? Oh, in fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man. But I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's a. Uh... Too dangerous. Oh well, at least I can make the dead talk. I have a bit of scratches. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. Can't give him any evidence. We haven't got any yet. I need to go. Let's have a look around his room. Hmm. Someone is making the most of his stay. Can you blame the man? I'd say he's not all Tools enough. and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Or, or weapons and defenses against visitors from the great beyond. Ooh, we've got clues in the mind a palace. A familiar substance. It's the ectoplasm that stained the seance table, but this time there's enough for analysis. How are we going to analyze it? 
Some clues can be examined with chemical analysis. Open your case book and highlight the evidence marked with your flask icon. Press X to start your analysis. Oh. Well, I never. Okay, so. Create the target formula on the right. Drag out two reagents. Drag out an operation. Link the reagents. Combines the result matches the target. Link your results to the formula. So we need three circles and two triangles. Hold X to move it, okay. Let's provide evidence. Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the... I beg your pardon? Yeah, you oh, tell him. It makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. Uh. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. Uh... A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. Go have a look in this mine palace. Emma was strangled. Emma left the scratches on Lucas' hands while fighting for her life. Yes. Emma was stealing the ring, but she framed the servants. Yes, yeah, see, Emma was a thief, but made Lord Craven believe that the servants were stealing it. She'd done it throughout the trip. Luca and Craven were neighbours. The lock can be picked easily. And Luca could. He could pick it easily, of course. Well, Craven punched the medium and he wants compensation for his abuse. Well, Craven is an unstable man who cannot manage his anger. We're getting there, people. Seance theft. The diamond was beside Emma. The murderer left the diamond. Whoever killed Emma left the diamond beside her body. Why would you do that, though? Lord Craven caught Emma with the stone. Lord Craven returned to the room just as Emma was hiding the diamond and caught it off her guard. More likely. But no, but then how does she get the scratches? I don't know, maybe it's that one, because how else the scratches? Lucas scratches was... No, I think Lucas scratches were not by the servants. I think Emma left scratches on Lucas' hands while fighting for her life. But that leaves the moth pin and the moth ring. Luca and Emma both have jewellery with the same moth design. Could they have something in common? Oh, here we go. The murderer left the diamond. The medium Luca could have known that Emma was a thief and that she was trying to frame him for her crime. Luca is the murderer. Emma tried to frame Luca the theft of a diamond in revenge he killed her bring luca to justice luca is the murderer he couldn't stop himself from killing emma even though he could have just told the police help luca escape luca fought for his life given his checkered past if he were arrested nothing could save him from a death sentence and emma knew it i will not stop him from fleeing to start a new life oh we have a decision here are we going to let Luca free or bring him to justice? He's a con man at the end of the day. It is likely he will face the death penalty. He is a chap, hard up on his luck. But what is to say he won't kill again? We don't bring him to justice. And then we will have that on our conscience. Let me know in the chat, people, what you have done if you've played this game. Did you bring Luca to justice or did you help him escape? This time, I'm going to bring him to justice. Luca is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing Emma, even though he could have just told the police everything. We have the opportunity to switch the conclusion, but I don't plan to do that. Accuse him. Do it. Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Really? Locks can be yes, picked. Yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. 
I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? Your scratches are damning. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... you are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. You knew Emma was a thief. As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Confess, Luca. It We've is got done, you banged Luca. to rights. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out. But oh, yes. he's going to fess up. I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. <gasps> I just Emma. Remembered my time in the clink. All I suffered while she indulged. Then I grabbed her throat. Ooh, you must be punished. I'll give you a chance. No, you must be punished. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not, you'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you, in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the Enemy number one. In jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. Mm. Big words there, Sherlock. Big words. And we get a trophy! Diamond in the rough. That was too much fun, Sherry. It was fun, oh, wasn't it, Sherry? Buzzing. Buzzing! What no did fun. you do, John? Nothing. Woman died, John. I yes, too slow to the that's truth. quite too right, actually. Let's bear that in mind, people. Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything, even murder, and then we get to solve it. I suspect you. We? What's this we, John? What's this we? John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence. Thank you very much. Hmm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect. There was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, oh, damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. Now this is where I'm going to be leaving. Oh, Sherry and John. We have successfully solved our first murder mystery. How much fun was that? Do let me know in the comments if you've played the game. Let me know what you think to it. And if you want me to create a playlist on Sherlock, let me know that as well. While you're in that area, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and sub to the channel if you've yet to do so. Make sure you check out my other playlists. There's bound to be something there that you like. Until next time, ciao for now.